another edition of Friday Night Frenzy. It is week seven for those of you who lost track. Tonight's schedule did not have the greatest slate of games, but it did include a rivalry, and those kinds of games are always fun. Gladstone hosting the Eskimos. Watch out. The Braves are going to mow you down, said that sign. Pretty clever there. Getting right to the action, Gladstone with a fourth and goal, and Brody Sandville punches it in from two yards out. The Braves get on the board first. Point after it was no good, so it's six to nothing, Gladstone. About three minutes later, Joshua Brunchitz takes the handoff, and he's a man on a mission. 75 yards to the house. The extra point is good. Escanaba takes a seven to six lead halfway through the first quarter. To the second quarter now, score is the same. Craig Kameen will find the hands of Jared Nash, and he turns it, it he turns into the end zone. 25-yard TD reception, extra point is good. The Eskimos extend their lead to eight, but the Braves will have an answer. Jared Crow launches it downfield to Vince Hughes, and he reels it in for the touchdown. Two-point conversion is no good. Escanaba still leading by two, and that was the score at the half. To the third now, Escanaba adds on to its lead. Kameen to Nash for the 35-yard TD. That makes it 21 to 12, and the Eskimos go on to beat the Braves 28 to 15 and improve to five and two. Escanaba heads downstate next week, and the Braves Marquette. Checking out the scoreboards now, Kingsford at home against Lamara, Wisconsin, and the Flivers improved to three and four with a 35 to six win. Marquette loses a heartbreaker tonight in. Man in Manaqua Lakeland, the Redmen were stopped at the two-yard line as time expired in the contest. Marquette must win their final two games to have a chance to make the postseason. And Menominee made the long, and I mean a long, trip to Okemos near Lansing, and the Maroons were shut out in the second half as the Chiefs win it by 18. Sault Ste. Marie fell to Rogers City 20-16. Back to the highlights we go. Scott Sergela and the Patriots playing at Lance. First quarter, Westwood looking to move the rock through the air. Nathan Beckman finds the arms of Reese Wara, who makes the interception deep in Patriots territory. And suing drive for the Purple Hornets. Wara facing third and long. He fires it into the end zone where Nathan Beckman gets a little revenge with an interception of his own. Defense was the name of the game early on in this one. Wara again on third and long. He throws it down near the sideline. Eric Anderson goes up with two hands and brings it down. Both teams combined for three picks in the first quarter. The Patriots would make the Purple Hornets pay a short time later. Beckman scampers home for six, from six yards out. Two-point conversion good. Eight to nothing. Westwood to the second now. Less than 30 seconds left in the half. Ashton Bergman bounces off a couple of a couple tacklers, and he finds the promised land from two yards out making it 14 nothing Patriots and Westwood pitches another shutout this season, improving to five and two on the year. The Patriots can clinch a playoff berth next week with a win at home against the Gogebic Miners. Now back to the scoreboards, a battle of the Miners in Besmer and Nagani coming out on top with a 50 to eight win. Nagani improves to four and three. The Copper Kings improved to seven and zero on the season with a 35 to nothing win over the Gremlins. Calumet meets Hancock next week. In the Copper Country, the Mountaineers leave McAfee Field with a touchdown victory over the Bulldogs 28-21. Iron Mountain can clinch a playoff berth next week if they beat Lance at home. Now back to the action we go. The Model Towners visiting the Norway Knights late in the first quarter. Score still knotted at zero. Mitchell LaGrave, can he stay in bounds? Yes, he does. And he is off to the races. Nobody is catching him. Norway gets on the board first. Extra point is good, and it is seven to nothing. Norway. In the second quarter, the model towners will have an answer. Seth Aho, the ball carrier, and he's breaking free, soaring, flying right into the end zone. Point after was no good. Gwen trailing seven to six, and this one turned out to be a back and forth battle. Less than a minute until halftime. Norway in Gwen territory. Austin Jansen barreling his way into the promised land to extend the lead to eight. Right before half, Gwyn's Tucker Taylor reeled in a 61-yard touchdown with less than five minutes to go to put Gwyn up 26 to 21, and that is the final from Norway. The Model Towners get back in the win column. Gwyn improves to five and two. The Model Towners host West Iron County next week. And in eight-man football, Rapid River wins at Cedarville 28 to 20. Forest Park takes care of rival North Dickinson tonight, putting up 72 points. 72 to 27 was the final, and Nathan Johnson ran for 224 yards and scored four times. The Jets go to Wisconsin and take care of Florence 42 to 22. 
and it was Ontonagon over Stevenson 20-8. And since the high school football season is more than halfway through the regular season, let's take a look back on some of the top plays through week seven. And let's start with that lethal duo in Marquette, quarterback Brendan Caskey and wide receiver Ethan Martish. This pass come from week four against Escanaba. Everything about it was perfect. The Redmen went on to win this game in overtime. Taking it back to week three, Munistein facing Bark River Harris and everything Mason Shiding did in this game is highlight reel worthy. There he gets an interception and then on offense in the same game he's using his teammates to elevate into the end zone. That was one of four touchdowns against the Broncos and sticking with the Mustangs. This hit by Anthony Matson in week five. Ouch. Munising beat the Bulldogs by three that night. And heading back to week three, the Hematites hosting Norway. Hunter Smith, a walking highlight reel. 49-yard touchdown reception from Gavin Sundberg. The following week, Smith back to return a punt against Westwood. And he takes it 85 yards to the house. The following week against Nagani, Smith returned a kickoff for 85 yard, yards once again. The 6-0 Hematites travel to West Iron County tomorrow. And week two, Iron Mountain at Westwood. Marcus Johnson airs it out. Charlie Gerhardt gets up and snatches it out of the air over the Westwood defender. The Patriots won that one. And now my personal favorite play. Not sure if it was meant to be a fake field goal attempt, but it worked out perfectly for the Copper Kings. Calumet shut out Iron Mountain to punch its ticket to the postseason last week. 